In this video, we're going to be exploring the third version of Autocoder. This one is also a code interpreter because it generates the code from user instructions and it actually executes it and tries to solve any errors or try to improve upon user input and feedback. Let's start with a demo. When we run this, we are asked to enter user instructions, multi-line input, so we say done at the end. We're going to try to go through about four examples, hopefully time allowing. We're going to first try to create a Pi game. I have pasted the instructions here by right clicking onto the terminal. I'm going to say done and we start iteration one using GPT-4. We can actually choose to use GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo in any combination we like. We'll talk about that later. The criteria for our game is an 800 by 800 Pi game window. We do have an echo.png image. We're going to be using that. So the PNG image should be 20 by 20 and it should move around the screen with arrow keys. And there should be a red circle which should move around randomly while trying to stay away from echo. And they should not be able to go off the screen and red circles trying to stay away from echo. So here's our game. In the second iteration, we were able to get it working. In the first one, we got a zero division error and uh, GPT-4 was automatically able to fix it. And we can actually move it around. And as you see, the red circle is trying to stay away from echo. So it's really nice. Uh, you can add additional dynamics to it, like scorekeeping and such. And so. After the second iteration, it said the program executed successfully because it did try to run the code. And after that, it's asking, is the code running as intended? In this case, we just say yes and move on. The generated code is saved to response.py file. You can actually run this yourself or experiment with it. So it's a the response of the GPT-4 is saved to .py file, response.py. The code for the new autocoder will be available for download for Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. Let's move on to our next example. I'm just going to say yes to is the code running as intended for the Pi game. And the code is running as intended and we break out of the autocoder. I'm starting it up again. Our new user instructions is to create a Python script which generates 100 numbers starting from zero, varying randomly by up to five in each iteration. Then plot this with a real-time plot. Sleep 0.1 second between update. We are starting iteration one using GPT-4. Each time a new iteration starts, it will overwrite whatever was written in response.py file. For example, if we wanted to keep our Pi game, we would have to copy and paste it or change the file name so that the code doesn't get overridden. I also know when I mentioned that the requirements for this is really open AI and term color only. Term color is to have colorful printing in terminal. But with the code interpreter of this kind, you can actually, since you're running it locally, you can run any libraries. We were able to, for example, run Pygame, but you, you couldn't do that with the GPT autocoder from the chat that open AI because it doesn't allow all libraries. So whatever libraries you want to use, you need to have them pip installed. Just keep that in mind in your environment. I just want to mention something real quick. While all this is going on, we can actually run our Pi game again. All you have to do is while the GPT autocoder is running, you start a new command prompt by clicking here and clicking command prompt. Make sure you're in the right environment, which I am. And I can actually run Python response.py and our Pi game will start. There we go. Just wanted to show you that real quick. All the while, our GPT-4 is running in the background. Just keep that in mind. Here's our graph. Actually, that started, and it's a real-time graph. This is lovely. I was able to get it right the first time around. And I think we should stop when we come to 100. There we go. We can close it. And it says, we get no errors. The program executed successfully. Here's the output. Is the coding code running as intended we say yes and break out of it if we were to say no we were able we could have entered additional instructions i am looking at the response.py file this is the script that it has generated it had you can run this again by creating a command prompt running it in the terminal or since we already have exited out of our autocoder we can just run it by clicking play and here is it again there we go. Just want to quickly mention my new website, EchoHive AI Academy. You can visit it at echohive.live and search all the videos I have created. They're all free. You can play them right from here. 
look at their description and find the code download links and you can actually search them with the search box as well. I just want to mention the three main files is for this is the main.py file, response.py file, which the generated uh, Python scripts are saved to, and the content.py, which is currently empty, but you can actually put in sample code examples or instructions and comments or doc strings, and Autocoder will take this into consideration. We're not using it currently. Let's move on to our next example. Before moving on, I just want to mention that we have this variable here called when GPT-4. If you were this, if you were to set this to one, then you will be using GPT-4 for every iteration. But if you were to set this to let's say three, we will be using in the first two iterations GPT-3.5 Turbo, and on the third one GPT-4, and after which we'll be able to enter additional feedback to the model. Let's copy our instructions. Let's run our autocoder, code interpreter. So our instruction is that use the file nvidia.txt. We do have nvidia's Wikipedia article right here. It says text file contains Wiki Wiki a Wikipedia article. Count how many times each word was used and plot the frequency of the top 10 words using a 3D scatter plot with Plotly. Handle for Unicode encoding errors, just in case. Let's see what it does. We started the first iteration using GPT 3.5 Turbo for this term. I do want to mention plot leaves a Python library for creating beautiful informatics, graphics, and plots and charts. Take a look. I'll put the link in the description. Oh, here it is. We actually, our chart just popped out as well, just at the same time. And uh, as we see, the frequency is, let's say, 4 has 43, 4 was used 43 times, 60 times, I'm sorry. That was used 74 times. And the was used 237 times. And uh, NVIDIA was mentioned actually less than four, according to this, if this is correct. This is the code that it generated. And it did say that the program executed successfully. There is no output because we're not printing anything in the terminal and we got no errors. So it did create a dictionary and counted all the words and added them. I guess this should be correct then. I'm actually surprised GPT 3.5 Turbo got it right the first time around. If it hadn't, it would have automatically moved on to the next iteration with whatever was printed at the error. Actually, to demonstrate it, let's run this again, maybe. I'm going to run this again just to see if it'll make an error. We'll see. By the way, the plot lay, plots actually pop out in the browser window automatically. That's why, just as I was showing the plot lay, the plot just popped out. Okay, actually, we did get an error here, indentation error. We are looking at the response file and we have an accidental indentation here. An error occurred and our error was indentation error. This actually gets fed back into the model and it automatically started the iteration number two. Okay, the second time around, the program executed successfully and we have some printout as well. It actually had found some words probably due to the way it parsed it. Here's the code that ran. And this was the graph it produced. It pretty much is the same graph, I believe, with the, the having the most frequency, but the other words it was able to parse out, I think some HTML or something, I'm not sure, is in here as well. So plotly, plots are really beautiful, I think. Anyway, the response is saved into response.py file. We do see here that program executed successfully. Here's the output. It actually had some printouts as well. You see, we are printing the most common words. Is the code running as intended? We say yes and break out of the autocoder. So I'm thinking we'll skip the fourth example because I don't want this video to be too long. But in future videos, I will be reviewing the code more in depth. We will be looking at the code here in a moment. But in future videos, we'll use the content.py for giving it reference code as well. Also review the code more in detail, but let's just quickly take a look at the code. We are importing OpenAI sub process to be able to run the code, read to be able to parse some stuff out of the output, term color to be able to print colorfully in the terminal, wind sound to play sound. I actually found out you can play wind sound with wind sound, you can play some beep frequency, so it alerts you, for example, if you if your code ran without error or when GPT-4 kicks in or something like that. Anyway, real quickly, we actually 
open the content.py file, read it if it has any content. In this case, it didn't. So we never really relied on content.py. We print in the terminal to enter user instructions. It's with a multi input. And then we have a request correction function that gets content, user input, previous code, std out, std error, and iteration. We print the iteration number, and then we check for when GPT-4, which we specify up here, right? This is the number which specifies until when GPT-3.5 Turbo will be used. Here we are specifying that. This is our message, system message for the first iteration. We do give it the content and user instructions. Otherwise, we use the subsequent iterations. It does have access to content, user input, previous code, std out, and std error. And this is a call to OpenAI with the system message and the user message. And then we, we're using re, parse out the Python code, save it to response.py. We run it with subprocess, get both the std out and std error. And then if there is an error, then we say error occurred and we print the necessary stuff. And then we check for if you need to use GPT, we make a sound. If you like, you can comment this out. I just didn't want to make sounds while recording the video. We ask a user to provide additional instructions. Otherwise, we say the program executed successfully. Here's the output. If there is any, we print. Then is ask if the code is running as intended. And that should be it. I'm not sure if this part is correct. Yeah, and we do append the additional input to the user input. So we do want to keep the original user input. And at the end of the day, if you don't have any errors, whatnot, if we did say yes, then we, oh, this part is correct. If the feedback is not yes, then we ask for additional instructions. If the feedback is yes, the code is running as intended, then we say code is running as intended. And then we just start the first iteration by call in the request correction, which we have defined up here somewhere, right here. This was a lot of fun. I'll be making more videos on this and do some live sessions testing it out. I think this just might be the best autocoder so far. This doesn't use the URL functionality of the autocoder 2. I'll link to other autocoder videos in the description if you want to check those out as well. I want to mention the original GPT-4 autocoder, which I have a streamlit app for i'll put the link in the description if you want to try it out you can just enter your opening api key and just run it like i said the code for this will be available to patreon supporters and don't forget to check out the echo hive ai academy at echohive.live link will be in the description thank you for watching hopefully you'll join me in the next videos future videos for about autocoder 3 as well um we're um, still intending to improve this further Please give me your feedbacks at the Discord channel or in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.